All right, so we talked about value. So it's an element of art, the elements of, or element of design, and the elements of design are the building blocks of all artwork and design work, just like the elements of the periodic table are the building blocks of all of chemistry. So then we discuss blending, which is the method of adding shading that you are probably most familiar with, where you just create that smooth transition, those gradients. Now, another way that you can add value, that you can shade, is called hatching. So hatching is basically just parallel lines, layering parallel lines to create value. So what this looks like, if you have a flat object like a cube, so we're gonna draw a little cube here, just start with a square, doesn't have to be perfect because these are just notes. From three of the corners, do some parallel diagonals, parallel to each other, and then connect them, close it in with lines parallel to the corresponding edge side. There's our cube. So if our light is coming, let's say from the right, a little bit behind, so this right side is going to be the brightest area. So I'm just gonna leave that the white of the page. Then this front edge is going to be in the strongest shadow if the light's coming from behind. So hatching is just layering parallel lines together. And the more lines you layer together, the closer they are, the darker it's going to appear. But we're not coloring it in so that it's solid. And we also aren't blending it together, smoothing it out. So you can still see the lines, especially when you get up real close. Okay, now the top, lights come in from the right a little bit above and behind. So this is going to have a little more light than the front. So I'm just gonna add some parallel lines, but I'm not putting them as many of them or as close together. So what's happening is it is creating this optical illusion where your pencil marks are blending with the white of the paper so that it appears gray. You, your mind reads that as gray as it is in shadow. Now, if we have a rounded object like a bucket, so we're gonna draw a little cylinder, a little bucket. So start with your ellipse. Bring the sides down, you can have them angle in or have them just perfectly straight like a can. And then round the bottom to match the curve of the top there. Now if our light is coming from the upper right here, so we always start lightly and then work your way darker because it is always easier to add more value, add darkness than it is to erase it. So the closer I get to this edge, the more lines I'm going to fill in. All right, so there's my shadow on the left and on the inside of the bucket, it's going to be the opposite because the light is hitting this inside edge. So the shadow is this direction. And there's my bucket. Cross hatching is the same idea except instead of layering parallel lines in one direction, we are layering parallel lines that are going in different directions, so different sets of parallel lines. So I think of it as layering grids to add value. So on a flat object, your shadows are usually more smooth, more consistent, so 
we're going to draw our prism. I say prism because this one definitely looks more like a rectangle than a square. So it's rectangular prism instead of a cube. There's a little bit of geometry for you. Okay, so we're going to shade it the same way as we did above. So light's coming from behind on the right. So you do parallel lines in one direction. And then you cross over them in another direction. And you just keep layering them up until it is a value that you want. It is as dark as you want. And you should be following along in your sketchbook, writing down these definitions and drawing the examples. All right, so now on the top, I'm going to make these lines a slightly different angles just to help be more clear that this is a different surface. It's going a different direction. It's going backward in space. All right, so that's our flat object. Round object, we're going to draw another bucket. Draw your lips, the sides, curve the bottom. Okay. And start lightly in one direction and then the other direction. And then start working your way to the darker areas. The inside, my shadow is from the opposite direction. And there's my bucket with cross hatching. All right. Now stippling. If you know what pointillism is, it's very similar. So pointillism is a method of painting that gained some popularity, was developed during the Impressionist movement, which we will talk about another time. But the idea is the painter layers small little dots of different colors together. And when you're up really close, you can see all those different dots. But when you step back, that optical illusion happens where it appears to blend together, to mix together into one color, as if you had actually mixed the paints together to create a solution, a new color. Um, so stippling is the same kind of idea it's layering dots, but we're not worrying about the color. So it's just creating value. So it's just black dots on a white background. And so the definition is basically, simply put, it's layering dots to create value. So draw a smaller cube this time because this method can be very time consuming in pencil. I don't use it with pencil as much, usually only if I'm covering a small area or if it just makes a lot of sense to help convey the texture of a surface. I will more often use it when I'm working with markers or even when I am working with paint. So you just layer the dots together and the closer they are, 
the darker it's going to appear. Like I said, this method can be very time consuming in pencil. But it creates a pretty unique texture in your shadows that can be really appropriate sometimes. Okay, so that's as dark as I'm gonna make that for time's sake. So if my light's coming from above a little bit, again, the top's gonna be a little bit lighter. So I'm just not going to place as many dots. They're gonna be further across, further spaced out, less dense. There you go. So that is stippling on a flat surface. Now on a rounded object, instead of a bucket this time, let's just do an egg. So draw a little egg shape. If our light's coming from up here. So on a more spherical shape that is rounded more generally, it's not just one surface that's rounded like on this cylinder, then you don't have to draw this part unless you would like to. But your, the way that your shadows break down is you're going to have a highlight and it's going to be a kind of ellipse, a circle, and then turns more gray as the light starts to wrap around and then it gets darker. So you want to follow the contour of the object. When I say contour, contour is simply the three-dimensional surface of an object. Okay, so we're going to start with our light area. Don't make sure to leave that highlight. And then we get darker. And there's our egg. Okay, last one, scumbling. Scumbling is essentially layering scribbles. But that does not mean just randomly scribbling all over the page. What I mean is layering marks to create value. So draw our last little box of the day. Light's coming from this direction, a little bit behind. So this is the darker, darkest surface. 
So you're just gonna make lines, make marks, and the more marks you layer together, the denser it is, the darker it's going to appear. So this method is more gestural, so it's a little bit less specific, but it still conveys the value of surfaces, which helps to understand the dimension. And because it's a little less specific, it can be very useful for soft objects to because it does have a lot of built up texture to it and also things that are far away because as things get further away we aren't able to see them with as much specificity we, our vision starts to blur it together that's why mountains when they are far away look so fuzzy on a round object, gonna do our little bucket. There's our light source. Same thing. And remember, start light, so our marks are going to be spaced out less dense, and then work your way to the darker areas. On the inside of the bucket, the op shadow is going the opposite direction. And there is, that is scumbling. So we have five different ways to add shade, to add value. So first, remember we got blending, creating those smooth transitions. And here also we followed the contour of the surface. And then Patching parallel lines. You can actually follow the contour of the surface in this method too. It help. It does help add some more dimension. It, it because it's communicating more information about the surface. So you layer your parallel lines, but following the curve. They're not straight lines. Cross-hatching, layering the grids, lines going in different directions. Stippling is the dots, and scumbling are the scribbles. So in your choice sketches, start experimenting with different methods of adding shading.